two schools from the same state. First one since Louisville and Kentucky down in New Orleans in 2012. Old running mates from the Southwest Conference about to meet, and here we go. Sermons, Adams, Rastatter, the officials recognized for their great work, getting a chance to govern over this one, and here we go. Cheney and Thamba to jump, and the final four after a two-year absence is underway. Jim Nance and Grant Hill, so good to be back with you and watch a little bit of it. And it should be tremendous man-to-man -man on both ends, Raft, as the Bears win the tap. A lot of dribble driving kick. They got to contain the individual skills. Houston. Here's Butler, player of the year in the conference. And that pass off of Houston, four seconds to shoot for Baylor, and Raff, rebounding underneath. And Raph early on, Jerome guarding Butler, that yeah. matchup, be fun to watch. Jerome also Defensive Player of the Year in the AAC this past season. Uh, plenty of time for a catch, a dribble, or two and shot. We kind yeah. of thought Jerome might be on Mitchell, but it's interesting, as you say, on Butler instead. Nice curl. Inbounds oh. and blocked. Back to Butler it goes. Uh, shot clock. Shot clock the... violation. The block never touched the rim. <laughs> now, wow. Grand Hill, have you ever done that? No. That I... is incredible. I've seen it in football, <laughs> but never in basketball. I played against Jumpin' Jackie Jackson years ago, and he hurled oh. over my shoulder. It was just amazing. Look at this. Whoa. That's unbelievable. Row right over, and then Ooh. Gorham swats it off the backboard. Uh, Jumpin' Jackie Jackson used to have half converse, will jump. Here's Grimes, his first shot from three. It's important he and Sasser get off. They may get these clean looks. Now it's Jarreau's turn. Two looks, tapped around again. Houston on the offensive glass, so tough. And that's their game, two possessions. Sasser tries and he hits. Boy, is that reminiscent? We're talking about Kelvin Sampson telling us. Exactly what he said. One possession, three right? Shots. Three shots. We that's shoot 33%, utterly. and you know what? It's the third time around we get the basket. I don't care about the field goal percentage because we keep getting chances on the same trip. Meantime, travel goal on the Bears. Yeah, Thamba. A little hurry to distribute the basketball, but that is a soft spot, too, if he can provide the lift with a good look. And, Raph, is so important for Houston to execute their offense and get and not turn the ball over. They don't want Baylor to get out in transition off of their turnovers. Yes. There's one right there. Yeah, it was just out of reach for Sasser. And watch the slap back on the wing. Here's Butler, yep. and he ties it with the outside shot. And at the Grant's point, anything turned over, they'll push it, and they'll kick back or slap back for the open look. Jerome, slip, able to get it to Cheney. Well, you must check out, though, Grant, if you're Bellow, you got to stick, guys. He sent three guys to the offensive glass. You're going to get fast breaks if you rebound. Four to shoot. Shot. <laughs> Slides off the rim, and it's chased down by T. And you mentioned on the open, the ability of the three guys on the perimeter. They are sensational with their own ability. Dribble drive, find, or finish. Great with floaters, this team. Teague with Grimes on him. Now here's Mitchell with that matchup Sasser defensively. And Mitchell hits a three as well. An unfair, Jim. Mitchell, we know he can turn the corner, but when he's knocking down threes, virtually unguardable for Baylor. Now Giroux, the matchup at this end is Mitchell on Giroux. Giroux off balance, banks at home. Oh, a nice pull up took his a little kiss, by the way, yes. uh, with vital that presence in the lane. Our first kiss of the Final Four. More to come. As Butler loses the handle, he's on the floor with it. And Houston now trying to find somebody to throw it to. We got a tie up, and it's going to the other end. And just fantastic defense. Houston so good defending the pick and roll right there. As you can see, the awareness for Butler, a trap right there, almost forcing a turnover, did force a turnover on Baylor. But what awareness defensively for the Cougars and Kelvin Sampson, one of the best defensive coaches in all of college basketball. Incredible. And even Baylor, when you think of Baylor too, a lot of people, because they're so efficient in the offensive end, they get down the stance and really get after you. 
Here's Drew driving again, and a whistle first on the outside. It's going to be on Mitchell, who was in early foul trouble on Monday night against uh, Arkansas. Had to sit a large part of the first half. And you just see that dribble. What he does, he's not going to turn the corner. He uses that between the leg. He weighs the distance between the defender and himself. If you give him the cushion, number 45 drills it. Inbounds to Grimes. Sasser loads up another one. He's hit two already. And he is a high volume three point shooter. Great confidence. Certainly a good sign for the Cougars. Sasser knocking down jump shots. And Raft, you said before the game, Sasser, who can be hot and cold, he has to come up big in this one. Absolutely. The Grimes are key. Nice denial by Giroux. Oh, a late call. Giroux so good with that wingspan denying. Goodness. But Giroux is whistled for that one. Here's Sasser. Knocking down two of his first three from downtown. It's important for Sasser and Grimes to knock down three-point shots when they're available. Sasser getting it done early. You know, with a name like Dijon, Giroux shouldn't be as nasty as he is on the defense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. He is so tough. Plays bigger. He does. Big Jonathan. Big screen. This is what he does. Provides a lift, a lot of energy. Underneath they go. Meyer gets free and hits the shot. How about this? These subs are unbelievable. He and Flagler, Grant. And he's important as a big who can score and be a presence for Baylor. Big time shot there yeah, in the baseline. They bring in Meyer, Flagler, and Chamwa Chachua. And they are all big contributors for the Bears' cause. I thought you sneezed there for a second. <laughs> Here's Grimes. And it's Chamwa Chachua. God bless you. Thank you. A little ball screen, which can be efficient. The East Carolina game, look at this open look. How about this, coming right off the bench with a quick five? This kid is a big time player. He's going to have a bright future, and he must grant have a great attitude coming off the bench. He comes off the bench, firing, certainly talented, stretches the floor as a four. Nice little trap by Big Jonathan. Once again, stretches it out, recovers. There's Cheney out high. He doesn't want it there. It gets it to Sasser with five to shoot. Sasser driving on Mitchell. Gives it up to Giroux. Floater. No go, but it's Gorm who keeps it alive. Well, that's that's their first pass to themselves. Exactly. <laughs> the offensive glass. Back to Gorm. Yeah. On the blocks. Has it stripped away. It was Butler who really forced it. And we know Baylor. They can force turnovers, too, with their defense. Great hands inside by Butler. Wow. Wow. Shua wow. showing a little outside shot. Good, this big Jonathan nailing some shots too. Seldom does he get that opportunity other than warm-ups. 6'8 sophomore from Cameroon who transferred from UNLV. Meyer trying to reach in and get a breakaway the other way. He's got a nail Gorham on the glass. What a great offensive rebounder he is. And he's in position already under there. Last seven points to the Bears. A miss and Gorham. As Mitchell should be able to provide a lift on the offensive glass. Jerome driving past Meyer and can have a foul here on Houston as we reach our first break with the Bears on a little run. The bench comes in, gives him a boost. Baylor with the early advantage. Let's go down to Tracy Wolfson. Well, Jim, you guys mentioned it. The battle on the glass could be the difference tonight. Houston averages 14.5 offensive rebounds per game, and a lot of that has to do with a drill they do in practice. They put a bubble on top of the rim, and every shot bounces off, and it forces players to box out and secure the rebound. Calvin Sampson telling us it develops mental and physical toughness and gives them a chance to win games when their shots aren't falling. They already have three offensive rebounds for three second chance points, guys. All right, Tracy. So they've been used to being around the bubble like they have exactly. been, not only at practice, but as all these teams have for three weeks here in Indianapolis. Uh, when I coached, I think our team had the bubble during the game. <laughs> that's really a time. Uh, but that's a great weapon. Look at this kid. Meyer doesn't get it, but he is able to retrieve it, kick it back out. This is where they're dangerous. Here he goes again from three-point land. Look at that big Jonathan. And he's fouled by Gresham, who comes onto the floor along with Fabian White for Houston. The UEFA Champions League quarterfinals kicks off Tuesday with Man City versus Dortmund and Real Madrid versus Liverpool. 
Stream every match live on Paramount+. Plus. And guys, Scott Drew talked about Chachua as a coach's dream. His energy is just contagious. You see it on defense, hustling there on the offensive play, getting that offensive put back. I like this man. He changes the, the game when he comes out there with his presence. And to add on that, Jim, on the other end, I wouldn't do any ball screens now if I were Houston. Uh, they are really jamming it up, blitzing it, trapping it, and he's recovering. They get some motion, some baseline bumps, and they get a little three-quarter court press. Houston able to break it with ease as Baylor now has peeled off the last eight points of the game. There's a little bit of a better set, I think. And once again, look at the string out and the protection in the back. Solid. Giroux doubled up, and he gets stolen by Mitchell. Just named the NABC Defensive Player of the Year in college basketball. You saw Wise. Flagler now passes up the shot, goes back to Mitchell. Well, that was great recovery defensively. Nice slip. Oh, and the foul's going to be called as Chachua went up, tried to dunk it. Fabian White was there. You said a nice slip, but a great read there by Mitchell. He's getting double teamed, still able to have the awareness to find Big Jonathan inside and just couldn't finish at the rim. But Baylor prepared for that hard trap and Mitchell delivering when needed. And here's the dilemma, Grant. He rolls. You can't come off the shooters. You can't. Yeah, they're so good for deep. It's two versus three. Unbelievably delicious Coca-Cola flavors come in four different flavors, which is a convenient parallel to the final four teams. Houston and Baylor just getting started. And of course, UCLA and Gonzaga game two tonight. This time he hits them both. Again, Mark on the floor, lefty. Good bounce, deep shot. There's as Memphis, right? Season ender. Hit it right inside the midcourt yeah. strike to win it. Yep, the regular season close. Houston's gone four minutes now without scoring. Pass nice. underneath. There he is, Mark. He's doubled up quickly. Sasser with five to shoot. Got another one. That's three for him. And that was great defense right there. But Sasser from long range, great awareness. Sasser feeling it early here in this game. Broke a 10-point run by the Bears. And they're going to double-team Mitchell every time in screen and roll, Houston. Now this is where he drives. So great as an ISO player. Boy, Meyer really taking his opportunities here. Look at that ball. Forced back outside, and Mitchell trying to get around Sasser. Leans in, got the whistle. Smart. Got the whistle on Sasser. These kids are so good at that anymore, aren't they? Body surgeon, get pump fake, get you the bite. Well, Davion Mitchell, he's been something to watch, hasn't he, during this tournament? It's interesting talking to Calvin Sampson as we asked him to go through kind of a little scouting report about this team, and he said he's Deion Sanders out there on defense. <laughs> he, well, you know, Deion taking away one side of the field. This guy takes away one side of the court. And with his athleticism and size, I'm surprised he never really did play football. I mean, he'd be <laughs> automatic on goal line situations. Smart kid. <laughs> Not going to get banged up. Because he and Maceo, that year off, really worked hard on their game. Played a lot of one on one together, they yeah. said. Right on now on the floor. So we got two bigs. Look at this trap. White's going to be fouled. I think they give it to Vital. Got our second break of the game. Baylor with a 10-0 run at one point before Sasser's able to end that streak. Baylor leads it by six. Yeah, the tournament summary, only UCLA has ever won a national championship. In fact, make that 11. And the last time a non-Eastern time winner we had was Kansas back in 08. We're going to get that this year with these four teams all west of the Mississippi. So again, limited tickets distributed for this game, but a lot of fans uh, were able to help the cause, raise some charity money as well, and have their cutouts presented. Grant bought a whole section. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and why not? It is a claim. It's great to have wrapped here in uh, the real version, not the cutout version. <laughs> I agree. 
Here's Giroux driving off the glass again, way too strong. Mark tries to tap it out, and it's off his hands. Well, you got to scrap and hustle on those rebounds. This Houston team hanging tough, really struggling on the offensive end. And without Grimes on the court right now for Houston, their leading score. Houston gave up only 17 in the first half to Oregon State, and already not even halfway through this first half. Baylor smashed that total. Oh, this is a pretty play. Really a pretty play. Uh, use that little pin down, the hesitation. Butler delivered. It's a vital. And the Bears, yes, Houston not anywhere close to being accustomed to giving up points as easily as we've seen here at the start of this game. So many good dribble drivers on Baylor. It's a lot of pressure on you individually. Here's Mark, short with the shot. And that'll go back to Baylor. That is really a nice little play. Uh, but it comes across here, a little dribble drive, and a little dive to the rim. Just solid get that pivot foot set. Vital, big time, does a lot of little things. Contribute to the cause. Vital, the senior from Lake Charles, Louisiana, who committed to the program after his sophomore year in high school. And a little pin down and an open look. Oh. Say goodnight. Woo. So hard to defend the way they're coming off of screens, firing. These guards for Baylor, we told you, they're elite. They're getting it done early for the Bears. Well, there's a former student down <laughs> in Knoxville. The student section delivered by Pizza Hut, official pizza of March Madness. He's pretty big in this town. Uh, the other end here, I think they got what we call the America's Play screen the screener. They have some quick hitters and some pin downs just to get away from the ball screen. Excellent Baylor defense early. White shut off on baseline. I like this a little different look though. Sasser gets in the paint. Look at this chase. Back out to Sasser. He's set now and rattles out with the three. Baylor pushing it up ahead and Grimes nice hands. prevented the breakaway basket to Chachua. That was after Baylor had scored seven straight trips. Grimes still hasn't hit a shot. He's 0 for 4. And Gorham really does a great job. Get a piece of that ball. And those is. Opportunity and takes advantage of it. Houston's biggest tournament deficit was before this 10 to Rutgers late in that second round game and came back to win. Now down 11. And here's the baseline bumps that they're so good. Have to lock and trail they, defensively. They did that time. There's Step Butler back. again. Same spot on the floor he hit previously. Sasser takes off. Baylor quickly back on D. Got to attack a little bit. Where we can make that deep shot. Sasser got on oh, one. Boy, is he ready to play. Four out of six Ooh. from downtown is something he could hit eight threes in a game against Tulane this year. And Houston finally gets a bucket after five straight misses. Teague. Nice inside rebounding position. Out of bounds, it goes to Houston. And ref, right now, the defense of Houston turning up a little bit, but great ball movement, unselfish play, and finding the hot hand, Sasser. That's not an easy shot contested there by Mitchell, but he is locked in right now and keeping his Cougars close, Jim. Yep, second team all-conference in the American Athletic Conference. But both of these teams, you can't overhelp. You dribble, you can show a little stunt, but goodness. Make that open look. White goes back outside with it. And again, Sasser with the hot hand, trying to drive on Mitchell. Tough one. Don't take it personal. Can't take it personal, Jim. Trying to beat one of the great defenders. Let it come. Here's Butler getting it easily. And the basket counts. So talented. We talked about Butler and his play in the open court. Just makes the right read. So poised. Not afraid to go inside and finish amongst the Giants. And Butler, who has struggled at times here in this tournament, off to a blazing start. First on Gorham. Just an impressive kid. Had a chance to visit with him yesterday. And certainly someone who plays at a high level. You can feel the spirit amongst him and his teammates. And no question. And loves, big, the, loves the moment, Jim. And a big part of the Waco community. He's been a Sunday school teacher at Harris Creek Baptist 
in Waco. He's got the three-point play. Butler with nine, leading Baylor at 25-14. Alabama's loss, would you say? Oh, yeah, transferred <laughs> out of there. Now, this is the play that's got, uh, giving them problems, I think. Stimey's in, gets him late in the shot clock. I think you got to get away from it. Giroux. Dennis Butler at this end, doing work. Look at this help. Fabian White passes up, gets Tough it shot. to Grimes. That's great, off. Great closeout and rebound inside by Thamba. But you're right, that defense by Baylor, how they're able to close out on the shooters and trap that screen and roll and get back. And they're almost at half court. They force him so far out with that fan dribble. And here comes the bench. You know, Flagler, one of those guys that transfer. We're talking about the portal with so many kids leaving mm. school. And uh, this is a kid that at Presbyterian, you think he was ready? He had 24 against UCLA, mm. 20 against Marquette, 20 against Dayton when he was at Presbyterian. You think they scouted those games? <laughs> he is ready. What luxury to come off the bench with a fourth great guard in Flagler. Meyer comes in with him as well. A little double. They do a great job. Shot ready when they come off those screens. Here comes Butler. Thamba offensive foul. Just moved. And actually, Butler talked him into that a little bit. We're under eight. There's the conference. Coach of the year for the second straight year of the Big 12. Scott Drew's got to love what he sees at this point. His Bears hot at both ends of the floor. This ball movement by Baylor, it's something to see. They've got seven assists on their eight made baskets. And Jim, stifling defense and superior shooting right now for Baylor has them in control. Meyer knocking it down. And of course, Butler getting it to the paint. Beautiful drop off, vital with the finish. And if you make a mistake, as Grimes did right here, get caught up on the screen, they will make you pay from downtown. Houston shooting only 28%, coming off its worst shooting game of the season against Oregon State on Monday night in the regional final. Well, I like this set, Jim. Got away from the ball screen, a little cross along the foul line. And Gorham looking to go baseline. Look at the help, Thamba. Houston will have only five to shoot, knocked out by Butler. Celebrate your favorite Final Four team with licensed fan gear from the official NCAA shop. For the best selection of team apparel, head to NCAA.com slash shop. Nice give back to Jerome. Oh, with the rebound. Dangerous in the early right here. Mitchell surveying, looking to take off. Sasser not giving him options. Cover the corners. Ooh. Houston doing a good job, though, keeping Mitchell out of the paint. Nice use of the floor. They love to cover that corner. Mitchell, it rattles out. Tap back. It goes to Meyer. They the came in and out of the hands of Gorham. Well, that's when you got to squeeze. Meyer in the right spot, though. And the one thing they shoot so well, you can tip shots. Look at this coverage. Here's Sasser. Passes he up it. the shot from the free throw line. Steps back now for a three. And that's wow. why. I guess that's why. Hey, he knows. <laughs> he knew. He just knows. He's Get him organized. 15 of Houston, 17. As Houston headed down the floor, it faced its biggest deficit of the season. That was down 13. That trims it to 10. And this pace actually is works in Houston's favor. They just can't get any buckets. Absolutely. A stifling defense on the other end as well by Baylor. Mitchell again wanting to drive. Oh, there you Outside go. Meyer. Kept alive by Flagler. And that's uh, a three again by Butler. The perfect time to get a three. That is just gorgeous. Get the right location and drill it. Butler with 12, including three threes. Empty side here. Just can't get to the rim. You got to drive and find. You need ball movement, player movement against this defense. And Houston's leading scorer, averaging 18. Grimes has not scored in this game. Five and a half to go in the first half. Here he is. They like to do that weave on a ball screen. Boy. Fifth turnover for Houston. Uh, so important for both teams. Uh, look at this. Get the puppies organized. Offensive rebound, kick out. 
number 12 in your program, delivering it big time for the Bears. Mitchell, look at this pass, Let's all the way to it. Butler. Another one, yes. It's the it's the but it's the roll. I'm, yep. Bomber rolls Freeza. to the basket, the weak side has to help. And Butler wide open, hot from downtown, Jim. That's what do they say, pick your poison? Yes. Right? That's now four, he's hit from the outside. Houston, for the second time, calls timeout, trying to figure things out. Sasser, look at the rest of the team. He's put up 15 of the 17, and the only other bucket belongs to Dejan Giroux, and he's one out of six from the field. Uh, the big thing, I think, Grant and Jim, you got to get quality shots. I mean, two offensive rebound even. They're not getting good high percentage shots, so they can chase it. There's too much stagnant offense right here. Too much isolation oh, against Mitchell. Tough shot. You're not going to get it done if you're Houston. Now, this is where you're dangerous. Spread the floor, kick back, or make the extra pass. Wagler. Oh, goodness. All nylon. Woo! Are they on fire? Another run by the Bears. They had a 10-point run earlier. Now 9-0 stretch. Got to get to the foul line somehow. Go to the rim. Create some havoc. Don't settle deep. There you go. Driving on. Flagler short with the shot. And it's Butler again. He's everywhere. 15 points for Butler. Four rebounds. Nice cut. Oh, 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 How pretty oh, is that? Oh, what a shot. Woo! Uh, seven assists for Mitchell right now. Just setting the table in transition and in the half court for the Bears. Butler has matched the Houston total of 17. Boy, are they connected. They are. A uh, little nickel dimer. Now Thamba is second. Houston has not had a field goal. Made one in the paint. Uh, when Grand Hill was playing, he hit Bobby Hurley. <laughs> oh, they got the three amigos, and why not? Connected. I'm fired. Tomorrow night, Arizona and Stanford square off in the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball National Championship game. Coverage on ESPN begins at 5 p.m. And for more information, go to NCAA.com. Chris Vandermeer, uh, one of the all-time winning is coach over a thousand. Did you happen to see the end of the South Carolina? That poor lady missed the shot. It was heartbreaking. And how about Arizona? Stunning UConn. Mm -hmm. Wow. There you go. Just can't finish the deal though. Would have been Houston's first points in the paint. They don't have any. They don't have a post-up game, which is something maybe to get on the board quickly, maybe get to the free throw line. This is when he dances. If he's got enough room, he's going to drill it. There he goes. There's Gorham with the rebound, able to hold off Vital. And Houston, they're really the only guy that can go get a shot and crate off the bounce is Giroux, but he's not offensive minded. He's looking to pass. Like his automatic switch. Vital can play all spots defensively. Houston needs to get Grimes going, puts up the jumper. And Vital right there, should be going the other oh, They got it on. Stay right here. Yeah, Gorman uh, attacked the glass and got fouled. That is just a 15 foul on the Bears. Now you got to think about closing out uh, this half if you're used to get some solid shots, try and tack a little bit, and defensively, I don't think you can help off these shooters. You got to stay at home. Second on Mitchell. And although Grimes missed that last shot, he was being aggressive, mm -hmm. not settling for a three, putting the ball on the floor. He's got to get going here, feeling somewhat good about himself going into halftime. They take Butler and Meyer out. They'll leave Mitchell on the floor with the two. Drow to inbound. Needs help. Pass. Gorm's open in the paint. And Chachua fell on him, but first he traveled, they call it. It was a great ball fake right there, Rab. It sure was. <laughs> kind of lost his pivot foot there, trying to gather himself with a beautiful pass. It was, such, it was such a good pump fake, Jonathan almost forgot his last name. <laughs> <laughs> he almost jumped over him like Jerome jumped yeah, over exactly. Him. By the way, they changed that last foul to Butler. That's why it took some time before the inbounds. Officials changed it from Mitchell to Butler, his first. And now here's Mitchell at the other end. Look at that fine. Final lost it on the floor. Gorham comes out with it. Houston now trying to 
accelerate, and Giroux lost the basketball. Watch the cross court. Flagler pull up jumper. And it's Sasser fouled by Vital over the back. Yeah, Vital should have just held off a little bit. Can't get there. Just go back and play some D. Brief rest it was for Meyer, who will be reinserted. Number two on Vital. He's very important to this team. Vital has been a good part of this first half on Grimes. And that's been important work for Baylor. Now Teague is on Grimes. I like how they go away from that ball screen. Get a little motion, get the defense moving, go side to side a little bit. Gorham. He can make that shot. A little reach in, I think, by Meyer. That's his first. Houston now with another one of those long droughts. Second time, Houston's gone four minutes without scoring. It'll be a one and one for Justin Gorham. And Jim, it's really the defense here. Just incredible Baylor. Houston, everything difficult and tough on the offensive end for the Cougars. Coming up on AT&T at the half, first half analysis and the latest college basketball news. It's all coming up on AT&T at the half. Uh, they did play a little 3-2 zone against Wichita State, Houston. I don't think we're going to see it. These such dangerous outside shooters. They just got to tough it up and stay at home on the wings. That's off the fingertips of Meyer. So a break for Houston. That one free throw broke an 11-0 Baylor stretch. And that's just that activity on the glass. They are so good at it. And Giroux needs help. Drives. And Baylor touched it last. Wait, everything is tough. Everything's right? been tested. It, it almost feels, too, like because they've struggled so much on offense, it's affected their defense as well. I mean, Good they've point. been just befuddled out there on the offensive end. Fabian White comes back out. He's got two fouls. Look at this help by Big Jonathan. White can shoot it. Not this one. And he does have a nice rotation. Once again, oh, they put pressure on your defensive transition. Meyer's not just a shooter. He can put it on the floor and get to the cup. And he also can pass, too. Driving on White. How about that? Good call, Grant. That was not an easy shot no. at all. Little kiss. <laughs> Nine points off the bench for Meyer. Look at this. Teague now. Drive it in, and it's knocked out of his hands. No foul. But they do, too. He loves that little baby hook. Xavier Simpson from... Michigan mesmerized with that. Jamon Mark back on the floor for Houston. And Butler, who's had 17 first half points, is back out also Great. for the Bears. Great I love there Gorham. By Gorham. I just think he never gives up on a play, does he? Well, I mean, bailed him out. An unforced turnover. You cannot have that against this Baylor team. Whew. Second block for Gorham. He had that one on the first possession of the game. Look at this oh, kid. Nice defense again, but boy, he is offensive minded. Meyer, get the block to White. A minute and a half to go. Well, really far out on the floor, starting their action. Look at this play. On the floor, tie up belongs to Baylor. Whew. Uh, they're playing like they want to forget 1950, huh? <laughs> that long ago. It's been a long time. Jeez. A couple of the guys from that 1950 Final Four team still around. Bill Fleetwood, Howard Havdi down in San Antonio, Mr. Fleetwood down in the retirement home at Stony Brook down in Waco, all excited they're watching the game today, and they're thankful for their coach, Scott Drew, who they say saved the program. They yeah, sure did. Those old members of the... 1950 Baylor Final Four team. They're second of two. They went to 48, made it to the finals, and they went to the Final Four again in 50. Scott Drew, one of the great rebuilding projects in all of college basketball. Maybe the best of all time, really. Uh, absolutely. Think about Good point. It. Resurrected the program. No I, question. It was in ashes. Look at this. Two to uh, shoot. Mitchell drains another three. Woo. Yeah, they ruled out a two. I guess they ruled out a two. Wow. Now this is where he excels, the defensive end. <laughs> Goodness. Automatic switch, he's underneath for Gorham. Gorham should be able to offensive rebound to get a good look. 
Sasser. Nice. Now nice. with 17 of Houston's 20. Nice hesitation, froze the defense. Got a high percentage shot at the rim. The easiest play for Houston there. Yep, the first basket by the Cougars in six minutes. Last shot. Now they're going to test the ball screen, I think. you got to be honest and guard the three. Now with five. Mitchell wants another three, oh. and he finds it. Oh, special. And you wow. want him to play football, Grant. <laughs> <laughs> what a oh. dominant first half performance. The Bears on both ends. Woo, the Bears are loose. A little nylon, number 45. Take that, Donovan Mitchell. That's the most first half points Houston's allowed this season. 45 to 20. And doing it against an elite defense in Houston. Impressive. They're good. <laughs> oh, they, <laughs> they are, are really good. good. High powered. Woo. Oh. 17 for Butler. Unselfish, solid team. Nine for Mitchell with seven assists. And Tracy, over to you. Well, Coach, how have you been able to get off to this hot offensive start against the second best defense in the country? Well, first and foremost, we know that this is only 20 minutes, so there's 20 more minutes to go. Um, couldn't ask for a better uh, start, first 20 minutes, but uh, that's a 40-minute game. So we got to come out and we got to do what we did the first half. That's share the basketball and then get high percentage shots. And then we got to do a great job on the defensive end. We got to rebound. We can't, we got to limit them to one shot. And then hopefully we can get in transition. Appreciate the time. Thanks a Thank lot. Thank you. Out rebounded, out shot, out everything Houston in that first half. What a show by Bob Baylor here at 45 20. We'll send you to AT&T at the half after this. Here's a look at our Uber Eats first half stats and decidedly one-sided as Houston was completely overmatched in the first 20 minutes. 57% from the field, 27% for Houston. Only Sasser had a big first half for Houston. Only one other bucket by the entire Cougar roster other than Sasser's six. And that defense, the offense, both ends of the floor for Baylor. So impressive, guys. And Jim, they dictate to you where you go and what you're going to do, forcing baseline right here. Of course, active hands, almost a turnover. And yes, they force 17 turnovers a game. So much aggressiveness, so much everyone's on accord, working together. Great defense by the Bears. And a real struggle here on the offensive end, not getting good opportunities, good looks. Great defense, you're right, absolutely sensational. And really, and no, no opportunity to get to the free throw line. I mean, no post-up game, no dribble drive. They've got to get going if they want to sneak back into this. Here's Jarreau with the ball as we start the second half. Jarreau hit a runner off the glass two and a half minutes in, and that was the only hoop by the entire team other than the six baskets by Sasser. And there's a shot that drops and that's, by Cheney. Uh, Kelvin knew you got to get something around the tin. Nice little trap step move there. Butler, 17 point first half performance. Teague, who did not score, they didn't need him. No. He is a talented kid as well. And he can fire it. This is on this attempt, and that's going to Houston. Tracy, over to you. Jim, I spoke with Calvin Sampson, who told me it needs to start with limiting the turnovers and fighting for rebounds. He said, we need to grab our misses and their misses. Offensively, he said, it's not just Quinton Grimes. Everyone needs to step up. Then he said, it's not the end of the world losing to Baylor, but we need to put up a fight doing it. We're not fighting hard enough. And they're going to that post-up game, Tracy, for that reason. Here's Cheney over Thamba. And a little too forceful. Pulled down by Thamba. I like the strategy. They did not post up at all in the first half. Not once. This is where it starts as well. Make them use some clock. Nice little slip pass. Thamba underneath the cylinder. Scores. Taylor is so good at curling those screens. Guards getting it to the paint and dropping off to the bigs, Raph. Absolutely. They're pretty good hands, too. Concentration. Once again, trying to go inside. Sign is Gorham. Grimes, quick jumper. Got it. First points of the night. Uh, nice little pin down curl. Got to get him going. He's too good. 
Averages 18 a game, third team All-America. Mitchell. Well, he can stop on a dime. That's a tough catch. Combo. Oh, the other Knocks way. The defender and scores. Oh, he's got a that elbow right there oh, for sure. Oh, goodness. He gave him a shave. As you said it best, they've gotten away from this high screen and roll. Although, Jero getting to the free throw line, being aggressive, attacking. Houston's offense looking better here early in the second half. Yeah, all of a sudden you get baskets by Jero and by Grimes and by Cheney. I would think Kelvin got after them. Oh, no question. <laughs> it is not their game. Like he did the officials a moment ago when they didn't call it on thumb up. And that's out and turned over by Baylor. Uh, Butler saying he got touched on that. This is that left arm. Goodness, that's an easy call, don't you no think? No question. Samson thinks the same <laughs> too, Raph. Wow. Right in front of the officials too. Absolutely. I didn't see him give the flop rule either. Grimes. We got a little small change. A little hand check call on Teague. When you put the ball on the floor and attack and be aggressive, you obviously have a chance to draw fouls. Grimes not settling here in the second half. Sasser inbounds it to Gorm. Gets it right back. Sasser with that 17-point first-half performance, including five threes. Now you got to execute. This is an excellent defensive team. Baylor, good coordination, trapping, looking vital in the zoning up in the middle and turnover. They say that was last touch by Houston. And Interro may hit his leg. Interro has at times will turn the ball over, but has maybe three or four unforced turnovers here today. Great defense. Interro just cannot handle the basketball. Lucky it didn't end in a fast break opportunity for the Bears. Jero's game is all on this end. Nice little slip. Damba again underneath. Gorham. Now going to help trap in the corner. They get it out easily. Teague. Such good handles. Drives on Grimes and it rolls off, but he'll shoot a couple. Well, they can toy with you, change their pace, explode to the rim. They are just extraordinary in the backcourt. Everything but. Maceo wanted a kiss last night in our Zoom call. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he blew that opportunity. He yeah. requested it. New Thursday, Agent Starling is brilliant, vulnerable, and ready to dive into the minds of monsters and madmen. The silence is over. The secrets are only beginning. A new Clarice Thursday at 10, 9 central, or stream anytime on CBS. That point, the first of the game for Teague, who averages... 16 a game, third team all Big 12 and can fire to 10 threes in a game already this year against Texas Tech. It Senior does, day. It doesn't impact their defense either, though. Uh, they don't score. That's okay. They're going to tee it up on this end. In the paint again. And that will send Cheney to the line after a break. Nope, not quite yet. And if you notice, though, on the offensive end, everything is getting into the paint. Pull-up jump shots, pin downs for Grimes at the free throw line. Right there, beautiful slip, pocket pass inside, drawing the foul, Cheney getting to the free throw line. The aggressiveness that Kelvin Sampson wants is happening here in the second. That's the third foul on Vital, and Cheney, as Vital will go to the bench with the three. Cheney, a transfer from Arkansas, spent two seasons in Fayetteville. We'll shoot one more. And I'll tell you, I'm not sure you want Baylor to go to the bench. I no, mean, no kidding. you come <laughs> in with Big Jonathan and Meyer, whole new dimension off the bench, the front line for the Bears. And deep. Good and deep. Little horn set here. Now to Butler. Butler and Mitchell. What halves they had the first half. Meyer now easily able to penetrate inside. Stuck underneath. To the corner. Here's Teague. A great job relocating though to get that look. Sasser tried to use that screen for a moment, but Meyer recovered.
Nice snap. take. Banks it in. They knew the mismatch there. Took advantage. Clever with the bounce. And Raf, what makes Baylor so tough on offense is as they run their offensive sets and they don't get anything, they got three, four guys who can break you down off the dribble and go get a basket. Just a tremendous luxury for Scott Drew. Double up on Butler. Here is Mitchell, left wide open. Rebound, comes all the way back to the shooter. Big Jonathan, oh. nice play. He's the one that saved it, the little tip, and of course the pass to the rim. And Teague takes that pass, it goes right up with it. Catch and shoot. That's nine assists thus far for Mitchell. Yep. How about that? <laughs> Finding everybody. And a couple of steals. Here's a little shuffle pass down inside, and Cheney off to a good start in the second half. Yeah, they've really taken advantage of getting it inside a little bit. Big time adjustment. All so good with the dribble. And Meyer. Trying to get around Cheney, lost it. Up ahead, Grimes. T trying to defend, and he fouls him outside for his second. Pretty, pretty smart. Giving that one up. Baylor up 25 at halftime. It's 20 with the first break of the second half. And now thrilling drives presented by Nissan. And right here, Mitchell finding the open man in transition. Beautiful cross-court pass to Flagler, knocking down the three. And this right here, nice back cut, nice delivery. I mean, he's like Raftery delivering at last call. <laughs> finding everyone, delivering, making everyone happy. Uh, don't get me nervous when the lights <laughs> quiver a little bit, yeah. but the way they shoot enables them to do those things. They lift the center where it's open, the spacing's extraordinary, and their ability to drill open looks. Drags that D. Mark on the floor for Houston. One of the higher recruits the program's ever had, and he hits the jump shot. The freshman out of Dickinson, Texas. Same high school that produced Houston's Heisman Trophy winner, Andre Ware. And this is the end, they gotta tee it up though. We're gonna get back in this. Too big, so to jam up the middle. Wrangler. Driving on Mark, tough shot. Tapped out though to Mitchell. Can't give them second opportunities. With Butler and a switch off. Finds the open player inside and no call. As Chachua hits the floor. What a job by Cheney that whole set. Sasser tried to strike on a quick three. He is playing well Cheney right now. Houston had hit its last five shots before the miss there by Marcus Sasser. Houston with the offensive rebounding part of their story all year. Grimes got another one. Nice. Continue to attack, not settle. Get a foot into that paint. Be aggressive, Houston, what they've done here in the second half. They've made up nine so far. Here's Mitchell. Empty side. Sasser trying to stop him, cuts him off. Nice job by Cheney again. Mitchell leans in, left hand, no. Cheney tries to battle for it, he touched it last. Unfortunate right there for Cheney. What a great defensive possession by Houston. Turning up the intensity, Kelvin Sampson. Excited about that effort, but got to secure the defensive exchange with the rebound there. Going to give Cheney a breather as Gorham comes back. Fabian White back on the floor. Houston on a 12-3 stretch. And Teague on the floor, too, to give Mitchell a little bit of a blow. Uh, ready for that out of bounds. They don't have to hand it off in the corner. Yep, Teague gives it up over to Flagler. Much better defense. No question. Flagler leans in and hits it. Oh, he can make shots, that kid. Great cut. The awareness to go to the empty spot. Floor with three fouls, and there's another call. Might be number four. It is fourth on vital. As Houston shots so far 78% in the second half, and only one turnover after a dismal first half.
And look at that bench production, Jim. I mean, Flagler, Meyer, Big Jonathan all coming in, producing 19 to 2. Vital on the bench with the fourth foul. And Mark to inbound. Right on the floor now, different kind of a look. See if they go to Gorman. He's got the mismatch down there. Able to get back in rotation there. Nope, Flagler is on Gorham. Big size advantage here for Gorham. He's going to take the outside shot. And it's Flagler who gets the rebound. Comes right at him. Oh, don't leave the ball. Miscommunication yeah, there in transition yeah, defense. Yeah, absolutely. You got to get matched up. They're so clever. Well, Scott Drew brought in a special speaker for the team getting ready for the Final Four. A guy that uh, was very important to this and remains so to this community, Tony Dungy. Spoke to the team. Scott, with great admiration, as we all do for Coach Dungy, who's done this a few times, by the way, as Coach Drew pointed out. He's got a pretty good success record. Dungy speaking to Clemson before a national championship, spoke to the Virginia team two years ago before their national title. So. Pretty good run. I could have used him years ago. Yes, indeed. <laughs> there he is. Winning a Super Bowl for Indianapolis. Had a pretty good quarterback, too. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad at all. Jarrell on the floor here. Contributions are at the other end. A little fake handoff. About that D by Flanker. Outside Mark. Got Thumba way away from the basket. And the runner, no. Fabian White got held. Put it back up and in. White, who was a two-year starter and then tore his ACL in the offseason in May. And he came back because he thought this team was special. Didn't rejoin the team until February 18th. Yeah, I think Wichita State, he came back. What a surprise, right? Yep. And 8-7 and seven against Oregon State the other day. Well, you got to get Fire. up on your guy. What a stroke. Grimes again. That time, Tardy on the cover. Impressive bench for Baylor. I said on one side here. Let it go. White. Just scored, looking again, traveled. The Bleacher Report app is home to all the action from around the tournament. Find your community by following your teams. Fan easier, fan faster, fan better. Download the Bleacher Report app today. That was the 11th turnover on Houston versus only eight for the Bears. They average 10 a game. Really terrific in that particular category. Not a good gamble. Sell out. Accelerates. Hit the bottom of the rim. And a timeout was called as Thamba was in trouble. Wow. And Baylor had the arrow anyway, but they take a timeout. 20 point advantage. Welcome back to Indianapolis. This Final Four is a family affair. Houston assisting coach Alvin Brooks Jr. going up against his son, Baylor assisting coach Alvin Brooks III. And they talked about it this week, what an experience it is for them. And they said, no matter what, someone will be playing in a national championship. Wife and mom, Rochelle in the stands, trying to stay impartial, wearing that T-shirt mm. that says, one family, two rivals. And by the way, this is Alvin Brooks Jr. final season with Houston as he will be the next head coach at Lamar. Where he starred playing for coach Billy Tubbs and Pat Foster as well. And they once had an 80 game home court winning streak, made the Sweet 16 when he was with an All American named Mike Oliver. All right. So Houston with 9.39 to go, they were trying to chip away, got on a little run to get it to 16, but. Baylor then reestablishes. Here's Grimes, got free for a moment. Tough shot, he'll be shooting three. Wow, tough got shot. Got away with it, really. Those fouls drive you crazy, right? Oh, drive you crazy. I mean, great defense by Meyer. You want to close out, but you can't run into his yeah. landing space right there. Grimes, lucky now he's getting three free throws. You know, Grimes has this streak going of having seven straight games with at least four made threes. He hasn't won. So far in this game, 0 for 4. He's hit a couple of two-point shots in the second half. Going to shoot three threes, three threes, that is. 
two for Meyer on the foul. And Jim, what an impressive season he's had. Six nationally with 3.4 made threes per game. So tonight, just not indicative of how he's played this season, shooting the ball from long range. I think the difference, uh, guys, at Baylor has other people. If your main guy like Teague didn't really have an offensive, other people just supply the lift. A lot of firepower over there with the Bears. It's all three of them. Seven for Grimes, all coming after the intermission. He was the AAC Tournament MOP and Co-Conference Player of the Year, and he's starting to warm up, but it's late. Just 9.20 left for a spot in the championship game. They have four perimeter guys. That's what makes them really dangerous now. A screener and four guys who can make, put it on the deck. You'll let three. Tachua! Able to maneuver around Mark. I love his juice, don't you? Oh, no question. Energy personified. Sure was. Empty side. Roll. And his power to go with that juice. That was the 10th assist for Mitchell. Got nine points, 10 assists. Look at him competing on defense here. And over the top. The speed. Big Jonathan covers him. Pass inside, and he almost makes the steal. Mitchell with those quick hands. Houston will have four to shoot. Here's that last basket with the assist from Mitchell. He catches everything, too. A little bump. Great vision. Big time. Finish at that rim. Jabro to inbound. Better hurry. They really do a nice job. Rhymes. Meyer able to get the long rebound. Everything's tough against Baylor. And what's impressive here at Baylor, we know they have talent. We know they are fast and play with speed, but they don't mind slowing it down and executing and using clock. Look at this hesitation. <laughs> wow. And Chachua comes up with it. Houston Grimes underneath. Sasser really hasn't had any looks at all. Hasn't tightened them up on him when he's been in there. Got one basket in the second half. Driving around on Butler. Tap the round, picked up by Sasser. Might have jumped in from out of bounds. Yeah, Bales. I think you're right. Short clock. Two to shoot. White. Fire. They got the push off. Yeah, just a little out of control. He stuck that arm out. Third on Meyer, Bill. Those loose arms will get you in trouble. <laughs> Lay within yourself. Nine up from day four. They are so good on the perimeter and on the bench as well. Be a fun matchup. It'll be a great matchup. I cannot wait. And as you said it best, Jim, they, they feel like UCLA. They belong yeah. on this stage. They're they, on a roll. They are. But Gonzaga has the stash. <laughs> you like that the stash. big. You ever had a stash like that? I'm a doll. Are you kidding me? I wouldn't be letting my house. <laughs> Mitchell with a push off. Sends Giroux to the line. Had a great visit with uh, Coach Sampson about Jero, and he came on his visit with his old uh, high school running mate, Bryson Gresham. They went to UMass at first and then to Howard College in Texas and then to Houston. Brought their moms on the recruiting trip, and he said, I think you need us more than we need you. Wow. And his mom said, Thank you for saying that. <laughs> I thought you were talking about Grant and myself. <laughs> Chachua with that strong move inside. He is something else. He is impressive. That was really cute, though. How impressed the parents were. Yeah. Houston with a quick trip. To Grant's point, they execute on this offensive end if they don't have anything early. Oh. Look at this slip. Oh, my goodness. Wow. They're all playmakers. They are. Great point. And they Ooh. do it so rapidly. The quickness. It's a blur. How about that little pocket pass? The big fella looming large. Send that in. Once again, another beautiful pocket pass. How many guys can make it off the dribble? That's tough. Not many. No. Not many at all. 
Two shots. Flagler likes what one of his fellow benchmates is doing on the on the court here. And at the line right now, he's up to 10 points and five rebounds, looking for another. I used to tell the refs want to give him the ball. He's really taken over. <laughs> I just love his attitude, though. All the games I've watched of Baylor, this kid immerses himself in the game. Looks like a beautiful teammate. A little pressure applied, and Houston brings it into the front court. Baylor plus 24 as far as points off the bench. Yeah, switching on the perimeter here when needed. Sasser. Butler keeping an eye on him. Now a little switch off. Here's Grimes. That's his shot. Just not falling from the outside today. Park leans in and lays it up. Uh, really good offensive rebounding there. Baby and White trying to kick it out for the open three. That was the story of their season, if there's anything. It was those second chance baskets. They've had nine offensive rebounds in this game today, but been out rebounded by 11 by this Bears bunch. They get 19 rebounds a game, excuse me, 14 rebounds, offensive rebounds a game. Yep, there's Teague with the two. I mean, these guards for Baylor. All balls down, just giving the ball, making plays. Great defense. Tapped up almost. White goes back outside. Grimes goes past Teague, who committed, and the basket counts. He'll shoot another. Get nonstop sports news, expert picks, and the biggest highlights on CBS Sports HQ, the free 24-7 Sports News Network. Download the CBS Sports app to watch today. You know, reflecting on that first half, if Houston came out and played the first half like they've started the second half, I know they're behind, they're not making inroads, but just a whole different persona. What do you think? What, what do you think it was? The stage, maybe? Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, plus the level of opponent certainly enters into it. Baylor's level of athleticism and intensity is, is really one of a kind. It wasn't matched at the top. No question. What's been impressive is Baylor's still out here competing on the defensive end, even though they're up big. Yeah, they move you side to side so well with the cuts of the weave. Team, he's yep. come on strong in this second half. They all have that shot. Great finishers to boot. Eight points for Teague, all in the second half to go along with five assists. Yep, 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 yep. I got two Now we'll switch off. Grimes way outside. He hits it. And that was the same shot he hit after Oregon State pulled even with Houston late in the game on Monday night in the regional final. And then Houston went on a late run to advance to the final four. And they can't afford to match, though. Nope. Run out of time here. Need a series of stops. Right now, centrally, Baylor, four point guards on the floor. So hard to defend if you're Houston. Look how they spread. And this guy puts you on skates, doesn't he? That's a shot there. Two hits the top of the backboard. Grimes sees traffic up ahead, so he backs off for a moment. Steps on the Good pedal, move. gives it up to White. Good pass right there, delivery by Grimes. Playing a lot better. He is playing better. Attacking, being more aggressive, yeah. more confident out there. They're just overwhelmed with this great defense. Elvin Sampson, that was his 1,000th game as a head coach. A milestone game when he beat Oregon State to make it to the sweet, uh, to the uh, Final Four for the second time. He brought Oklahoma back in 02. And with his, his team, his program, it's a family affair. Son Kellen is the coach in waiting and first assistant. His daughter Lauren is director of basketball ops. His wife Karen, when we're not in the COVID era. Mm -hmm. uh, She's been known to cook for the team on the night before home games, and it's been such a satisfying and fulfilling time in Kelvin's career. He's got a lot of fans out there in the basketball world. Uh, th this is his place, though. Yep. How about, about the job? It? How about the job he's done in, in Houston? He's building that program. Absolutely sensational. Not that you get some alumni support. <laughs> Talking about anybody in particular? Oh, <laughs> He's not far from me right uh, here. There's Flagler. So good. It's good. Yeah, quick Might time be a out. little hurt too, Flagler. Landed Holding his uh, right leg. Hopefully it's a cramp.
Got a break in the action. Baylor 348 from the championship game appearance. Back here in Indianapolis. The way this team operates. All these assists, baskets. There's the bench. Cam powered by AT&T 5G. 21 assists on their 26 made baskets. Mitchell leading the way with 11 assists, which is just one off his career high. Pretty impressive. Though. It's an impressive selfish with the talent they have, how they can play together and thrive together. You don't see that quite often. It's amazing. Giving of themselves. A token pressure back to their straight up man. You know what's amazing? A few years ago, he was a matchup zone guy at Baylor. He didn't play man to man, but they are dynamic on this end of the floor. Nice little roll with no finish. Follow up by Giroux. Very hard team to press, though. Got the handle. Especially now with these four guards out here. Make you pay if you have a slip. Wagler. So explosive off the bench. T. Big second half for him. In no hurry with three minutes to go. Seven to shoot. Flips it to the corner to Mitchell. Three more. Location. And that gives him his double-double now with 12 and 11. So willing and so understanding of where to be. How about 11 assists with no turnovers? And he's spread it around. He's gotten six different players in that assist category. Raph, look at Baylor still competing on defense. Not giving up anything. Great show by Big John. Also at practice, they've got so, a little nice smart play. They've got so many good players. Their practices have to be extraordinary. Getting after one another. Well, Sasser was a one-man show for Houston in that first half with 17 of Houston's 20. He's got 19 now for the game. Going to shoot three at the line. Now, these kids have a lot of pride at Houston. A great year. Unfortunately, as we know, they'll forget that year after this loss uh, for a day or so. But just great competitors. Calvin, just an extraordinary coach no matter where he's been. His name yesterday, the John McClendon National Coach of the Year. Gorham's coming back in. What was the line he said about when he's trying to rebuild his program? You don't water the leaves, you water the roots. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a great line. And he's done that. He's come in and watered these roots, built this program, made it relevant again. He thought there was something here that could be done. He made promises to people he could bring the program back to the Final Four. And he has done so in his seventh year. 2-10 to go. It must be a heck of a gardener, huh? The <laughs> job he's done. <laughs> nice slip. Fetchua beats the corner. Teague loads it up. He can really knock him down. It's a very peculiar release, isn't it? Hey, it was taught by his mother. Yeah, a little halt. Mama knows best. <laughs> Absolutely. We all know that. Jerome over the top. Flies right onto the back of Butler, and it's going to be whistled for it. Raph, I mean, I, I have to tell you right here, great pocket pass by Butler, but look at the pass by Butler, the by the big guy. fella. Finding the wide open teammate, Teague, knocking down that three. Great unselfishness. A little thing by Chachua was certainly successful, and that's winning basketball by the Bears. Knows his job, doesn't he? Star, role. star in your role. Yeah, exactly. And now they bring in some of the deep bench players. Zach Loveday comes in. You saw Jordan Turner check in. LJ Cryer. Jim, they all feel they can be the lead actor, and they can also be a role player. And they don't mind stepping back. If somebody's got it going, they're going to find them. And a great spirit. Teamwork. Giroux was such a big part of this Houston journey. He was the outstanding player of the regional. Graduated back in December. Houston feels indebted to him for what he did in his senior year. Just a minute and 30 to go. A game that's been dominated by Baylor. 
Just busting out with a 25-point lead at halftime, and the shot gets blocked by Grimes. That's that low delivery, though, you can get up on, you know? Grimes, he wants it. Just not able to hit a three. Just one in the game so far. Like this kid. Leaves it out there. Gives him a lift on both ends of the floor. Great rebounder. Came a long way this season. Was the most improved player in his conference. After backing up Fabian White in the pass. There's a three-point shot. Gorham with re rebound at this end. Gorham had a game where he had 19 rebounds in the game with 11 offensive boards. So most improved indeed, Jim. Let's take a look at the Capital One rewarding performance. Now, where do you go with that? Because there have been so many by this Baylor bunch. <laughs> take your pick, right? Yeah. Go around the horn. Uh, Butler, Mitchell, Magler, Meyer. And you don't want that guy guarding you, let me tell you. He wows you on the offensive end and just locks you up on the other. Rhymes comes out during that timeout. 13 points all coming in the second half. Heartbreaking for these kids. Get so close. Yeah, I see the emotion. Yeah, you get here and you just know, you know, you've fought so many adversities, particularly for everybody this year. But you had these challenges along the way to make the Final Four, and everybody believes that they can win the two games. In the end, ah, drive in and score the basket for Shed. But, Jimmy, you know, each coach said to the three of us, we got closer in the bubble. You know, yeah. just, you know, we were forced to enjoy one another. We came up a family. Three-point shot. It gets down and out. No, Jumper, yes. Look at the bench. They are going wild. They love that for Mark <laughs> Peterson. Oh. Uh, they appreciate what they do every day in practice. Now, it's hard to accept defeat at, at, at this point in, in this arena. But with time, you'll look back and be proud of what you accomplished. Everybody eventually comes to the grips and understands that it was a special season. And I think the people in Houston, the next couple of years are going to be enjoyable. And Kevin's going to get them going again. A great platform to build on. Jamal Shedd just hit a basket. Freshman. Shoot one more. So healthy to see them with the tears, too. Yep. Was, and how meaningful this is. We leave it all out there. Come up empty. You always feel like you could have done more. That's as impressive as it gets. Baylor advances to the championship game. Scott Drew, he's built this program truly from the ashes. His first Final Four, he said it was all about the appreciation he had for all the players of the past. And Raft, I think, as impressive of a victory for Baylor here in this tournament as we've seen. Uh, absolutely. Mm. Oh. They're back. Uh, you know, uh, they struggled against Kansas after COVID. A little better against West Virginia. Boy, they are back right now. <laughs> they are back indeed. 